Cubs beat L.A. They pound them, and they win five out of six in their opening homestand at Wrigley Field. They hit the road to take on the Padres. They're worried about trying to find some pitching. Jamison Tyone going to be on the show, and they lost Merriweather. Who replaces him? Yeah, you know it's Palencia, but what about that bullpen? We're going to get into that and more right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. That's a, just a way of saying, hey, go Cubs. And make sure you hit the bell so you know when we're dropping content, like that interview we did with Tyone yesterday. All that right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Here's your way and my way, and our invitation, by the way, to the Cubs Baseball Channel. Oh, let me put him on the screen. There he is, our Italian friend from Wrigleyville, Anthony <laughs> Pasquale. I'm Mick Gillespie. What's going on, man? Go Cubs. Yes, sir. Huge series win over the L.A. Dodgers. Um, today was a beatdown that ended up lasting almost seven hours because of a pretty hefty rain delay in the middle. Um, but, you know, some fans toughed it out. They were rewarded with another um, Cody Bellinger homer after chanting his name late in a blowout game and freezing cold in April. But um, really good job. You know, we, we did the watch party on Friday for mm. the first game of the series, took their two nothing punch and really took the series from there and, uh, controlled it. I felt bad for Imanaga today just because of the rain delay. He was cruising, uh, four innings. I think he only had three or four strikeouts, but only two hits allowed again, no walk. So his Cubs career is off to a really good start. It would have been nice for him to go deeper into the bull. Uh, deeper into the game to save the bullpen a little bit, but there's nothing you can do when mother nature stands in the way, but Hey, two out of three from arguably the best team in baseball cubbies are hot. Yeah. You know, it was good to watch them yesterday and the way that they put everything together. How about Michael Bush against his old team? We were wondering what we were getting because the Cubs gave up a lot. Well, two really good players to get Michael Bush, but he looks like he, He's got the potential to be a superstar. I mean, I know we're only talking about a few games, mm -hmm. but that base is clearing double that he hit. He had the big home run on Friday. This guy feels like this could be the next Cubs big first baseman. Yeah, he had a great series. It was really good. Um, for, like you said, started on Friday and then just to yesterday, top to bottom, a really strong series. Um, that base is clearing double yesterday in the first inning. When Dansby came around third, slid into home, all fired up, give the fist bumps and everything. Um, he just he feels like a cub and it's mm -hmm. early, but he just fits what they're trying to do. Um, he's got a little bit of swagger. I know they said on the broadcast he's not the biggest guy, but he definitely has some pop in his bat. And I like that he hasn't looked overmatched in any at bats. Like he just no. looks like he belongs, which is something that I think you wanted to see, something you were looking for. And I know. A lot of Cubs fans were talking all spring about Matt Mervis and how he should make the team or how he should be included in some of these roster battles. And I know you've seen a lot more of Matt Mervis than I have, but Michael Bush looks like to be that first baseman of the future that you've been looking for. Yeah, people have asked me, what about him playing third? Just because it's it's been such an adventure I guess for lack of a better word for Christopher Morrell. Yeah. But you want Morrell's bat in the lineup. And I think we're just going to have to, you know, we're just going to have to deal with the fact that when Morrell's in there, bad things are going to happen at third base until he gets it figured out. Because I feel like the Cubs don't want to put him at third because I think they want him to be the first baseman and, and they don't want to change any of that. Yeah. And I also, I got to applaud Craig council a little bit. One thing I've noticed is, um, the Cubs do have some some pitchers that are ground ball inducing pitchers. Um, I know Steele's one of them. Imanaga's one of them. Um, but even more so like Assad Wicks, they really generate a lot of ground balls. And you notice that when, you know, Assad starts or when Wicks starts, Madrigal's at third because you can expect a lot of balls on the ground. Imanaga, he's a fly ball pitcher. That's when you give Morel the start at third. So I think Craig Council's picking his spots right. Um, and then obviously you have to to match it up with the pitching too, whether or not Garrett Cooper gets a start. And if that's the case, you, you might still want Michael Bush at DH, then you might have to put Morell at third. But 
yeah, I, you'd prefer Bush to feel comfortable and confident at first before you start moving him around, especially if it's working. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And that's a great point, too. I mean, you, you really nail something there. I like Craig Council. I, I just feel comfortable with him. I, I I just feel like this guy is ready to win. And the Cubs have. I mean, they're off to a good start now. You know, you, you beat the Dodgers two out of three. The Dodgers, though, I'll tell you what, man, that, that rotation's a little suspect. Yeah, I know they have some injuries. Walker Bueller and Clayton Kershaw, who have both been Dodgers forever. They're on the shelf right now. Um, you know, Bobby Miller looked like in that first inning that they had that whole rotation figured out on Friday, but that second inning, it makes you wonder. And then Gavin Stone, fine pitcher. He went to last, uh, yesterday for the Dodgers. Um, and then we saw Yamamoto give his best outing of the year so far. I think they'll eventually figure it out, but if they aren't going to make a deep postseason run, starting pitching is going to be why they get bounced early. Yeah, and talking about starting pitching, let's switch gears and talk about Cubs starting pitching because right now they're without two of their their best starters. Yeah. Uh, Jason Tyone, who had the big year with the Yankees, Cubs signed them last year, was a disappointment in my opinion. He was just so inconsistent, and I was looking for this year to be a bounce-back season, and he had the back issue Got a chance to catch up with him yesterday, and I'm going to play that for you guys in a second. If you didn't watch it, I put the entire interview, uh, which isn't very long, on the channel. But um, saw him pitch. He got hit pretty hard at times, um, and then a lot of the hits that he gave up were, you know, just kind of like, uh, you know, like little bleeders and stuff. But gave up six hits and four runs, three earned. With a walk and four strikeouts in two and two thirds innings, 52 pitches, 35 of them for strikes. But here's what he said yesterday after his outing in Tennessee. And then we'll kind of chew on that because Justin Steele's gone too. Mm -hmm. So you really like to have him back in the rotation because it does feel like the Cubs are kind of stretched right now with starting pitching. Good. Good. Uh, just trying to build up. Uh, don't feel the back at all. Feel totally healthy. That's great. Uh, what was it like in that first inning getting back out there? Uh, you know, just trying to remember like the routine between pitches and the pitch clock, um, runners in motion and stuff. Just trying to get kind of my feet wet with that again. But just like body wise and stuff, it felt really good. But um, you know, just getting back into it. There you go. And you know, you're talking about a guy who was ready to go in spring training, went into the bullpen and felt something in his back, and you can tell. It, now it's all just about him getting the reps that it takes to get back into the rotation. I'm guessing that he's probably less than two weeks away from being ready. Yeah. And it, it, it's one of those things like it, it's essentially spring training for him. Like that's what he's working through right now because he didn't get that full spring training. These rehab starts, they're not about, you know, three up, three down. They're about getting comfortable on the mound, getting comfortable facing hitters. And, uh, this this outing obviously the the numbers don't look perfect but if he leaves the outing saying the body feels good and you're getting the rhythm back those are the kinds of things you're looking for out of these rehab outings so you could definitely use him back in the rotation i think uh this series with the padres that starts tonight um you know Assad is pitching and then hendricks will go on wednesday but tuesday it's still up for grabs it might be another one of those luke little to ben brown situations mm -hmm. but pretty soon you'd you'd like to have Tyone in that rotation. And um, eventually once Steele comes back, what do you think they do with that uh, depth then? I know they don't have it right now, but maybe a month from now when Steele and Tyone are both healthy, assuming Wicks, Assad, um, Hendricks, and Imanaga are also healthy, does Assad go back to the bullpen and Ben Brown back to triple a, is that probably what happens? I mean, I mean let, and you bring up a great point and, and let me pull this up here because I think it kind of leads into where I'm going, right? Merriweather, all of a sudden now he's on the IL and they bring up Dan, Daniel Palencia. And if you guys watched the show yesterday, I was talking about Palencia as maybe the number one option to replace Jose Quas, who yeah, <laughs> I I mean, look, it's it's not this isn't personal. I just feel like there's better options in the Cubs system right now than Jose sure. Quas. I mean, I, every time he comes into the game, you know, it's like you're holding your breath that he's not going to bounce the ball or he's not going to get hit. I just don't think he's dialed in right now. Palencia is a guy who I feel like could possibly be someone the Cubs could really rely on. He's got the fastball, triple digits. 
he he just has to figure out how to put away big league hitters. It's like when he gets ahead, he just can't put them away. That just takes time. But you also have C.J. Edwards, who you just signed to a minor league deal or, or is – uh, or you know, working that way, and it, mm-hmm. there's a bunch bunch of options other than Quas. So what I'm hoping is what happens is when you get Steele back, uh, which could be in May, right? They're saying May. Uh, I'm telling you right now that if things keep going well for Tyone, that it's probably going to be two weeks. I mean, you know, right. uh, around that neighborhood because he threw 53 pitches today. You know, he's going to rest and then go back out, stretch, do all those things. It's not going to take him long to get to 100 pitches. And that's what Craig Council said at the beginning of this. He's got to be able to throw 100 pitches to be a starter, right? So all it does is just make you better because you once you slide a Ben Brown, who was a reliever and a starter last year, or Javier Assad, who I like better in the starting rotation, honestly, than as a reliever. But you slide those guys back, then you can get rid of some of the guys who are in mm-hmm. you know, a weak links in the chain, which I feel like Quas is one of those guys right now. I mean, I, I just, I, I, saw, I got a, a, you know, one of the comments was we turn the TV off every time he comes in. And it, and it, it does feel like that right now. Yeah. Almonte was a guy I was worried about too. And I know it was an eight nothing game at the time, yeah. but he looked pretty good uh, yesterday. And Palencia came and finished the last three innings off, I think. Only gave up the one run. It was, of course, Otani. The only guy who pitched well against Otani this weekend was Imanaga. So that, that was, was kinda, awesome. That was cool to see. Um, punched him out, I think, twice. But it was – that's a good point, too. Once you get Steele healthy and Tyone healthy, maybe you even think about a six-man rotation if Assad's still cooking out of that rotation. But otherwise, you put him into that swing role that he was also excellent in last year. And a guy like Quas or El Monte or whoever you don't feel super confident in, they can go down to AAA or DFAM or whatever the, the options look like there. Um, and, and yeah, if Ben Brown is still effective, you know, put someone who isn't effective down. It doesn't have to be Ben Brown that goes down or, you know, whatever the case may be when CJ Edwards comes up. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be interesting. It's It's one of those situations that in a month, it could be a really good problem to have. But right now, they're a lot thinner than we'd expect. Mm-hmm. And and you're looking at guys and you're going, all right, you're on the 40 man like Keegan Thompson. And you're going, you know, are you going to stick, are you going to stick there or, or is something going to happen? You know, mm-hmm. Bre- uh, Brennan Davis, you know, because these 40 man spots have become so valuable now yeah. just due to the injuries and being able to kind of work guys back in and, you know, it, it from triple A to the big leagues or whatever you're trying to do. Right. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's it, those are so tough because you don't want to give up a Garcia, right? The guy that helped lead the Rangers to the World Series, right? You, you mm-hmm. teams had him, then you know, and then all of a sudden he becomes one of, the, you know, one of the all time great World Series heroes, and maybe the you know a guy that might have a statue in Arlington one day, you know. But that that's the tough part of it. But at the same time, this team has to get they they've got to get the best pitchers that they have to the big leagues. And right. I, I, when I look at Quas, I just think there's guys better in triple a and, you know, but the, but the problem is trying to figure out how to make all of that work. Yeah. And speaking of triple a, I saw that um, early in the game or right before the game um, yesterday, the Iowa Cubs pulled P Armstrong out of the game and he looked healthy. Um, I follow their broadcaster, Alex Cohen on Twitter. And he said um, if he was injured, he would have, like gone to the clubhouse and you have to walk like outside the stadium to go to the clubhouse. And he didn't do that. So some people were thinking potentially a call up could be coming for him. I don't really see where on the roster he would go right now, unless um, because you have Talkman already as your fourth outfielder, but um, do you have any word on the PCA news? I, I don't know. I mean, we saw Talkman in the game yesterday. Made a Bellinger nice hit a home run. Yeah. Bellinger hit a home run. Um, and then you had uh Hap, right? Did, but Suzuki kind of he, he kind of awkwardly went around the base the other day, but then he was back in there and it didn't seem yeah, like he was that affected there. him at all, you know. So I don't know. I mean, I, who knows, to be honest with you, you know, he might have just not been feeling good that day or something. Yeah, I mean, that's it, possible too. No, there's no telling, but I don't, I don't foresee him being a guy that's called up right now. Uh, he's still trying to get it figured out again in AAA, but I mean, anything can happen. 
Yeah. The, the thing I like about Craig Council so far, and you can see it with the way he puts the lineup together one through nine, but it, it seems his priority is making sure that, for example, in the lineup, the best players hit the most. So yeah. then like as that trickles down the roster into the 40 man and then into the minor leagues, his priority is getting the best players in the big league. So I think um, it, it's a good point with Quas that you've made. And you said you want the best pitchers in the big leagues. I think Ben Brown is probably one of your best pitchers. Yeah, He's probably a guy that is in that top 13, top 14, even once Steele and Tyone are healthy. So it'll be interesting to see how the rotation and the bullpen kind of sets in place as we get into the summer months. But um, yeah, like you said, right now, that there's a few guys that when they they come on the screen, you you might want to change the channel. Yeah, yeah, El Monte, I, he's another one, and I hope he gets it figured out. So you're right. Looked a little bit yesterday. Now uh, the Cubs will take on the Padres. They go to the West Coast. A lot of seasons, you get out to the West Coast, and bad things happen. I remember listening to these games as a kid uh, on the radio. I fought, we're, we're ahead. I fall asleep, and we lost by the time I wake up, right? So, yeah. <laughs> like, the Padres are a dangerous team. And the matchup is Javier Assad against former Cub U Darvish. Cubs traded him and got Owen Casey back. So it could end up being a potentially great trade for the mm -hmm. Cubs. Darvish, to me, I'm going to give you my take on Darvish. He's got great stuff. He's like that really, really nice, expensive car that you can never drive. Like it always feels like, you know, it's like he'll roll through four innings. And if you're like, if it's a close game, he keeps you close. If you score a lot of runs, he's going to give up a lot of runs. Like, but it, you never really see the guy. He's never. He's not like a twenty game winner, because as good as he pitches, it always feels like he finds a way to kind of break even, as far as the wins and losses. But his ERA always is good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And then, and he's like a, a five hundred pitcher. Right. I remember that even when he was with the Cubs, he finished. Second that year in the NL Cy Young, I think in 2020. And I think his record was like, I don't remember for sure, but I think it was like seven and five. Like it, he still didn't manage to to break past that, um, that 500 mark. But yeah, you're going to see Darvish tonight. Uh, I think Dylan Cease is scheduled to pitch later in the series for San Diego. That's another guy that was in the Cubs organization. Um, I originally wasn't too thrilled when the Cubs dealt Darvish. I also was upset that Caratini was like a throw in in the deal because I really liked him too. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if Owen Casey's everything he looks like, I, I'm not going to be mad for too much longer. Yeah, now he's a good player. And I think that's going to eventually be a great trade for the Cubs. And, and kind of the opposite of you, Darvish, to me is Greg Maddox, who I, I remember talking to, to, you know, Greg, and he's like, hey, the object of the game is to win the game. So if you get, if they score seven, you can give up six, but if they score two, you can only give up one. Right. And who was ever better at that than mad dog, you know, uh, it's, yeah, just, that's a, it's a good point. You know, a lot of these guys um, think that all pitchers have this mindset as, you know, I'm going to go out there and dominate. I want to get every batter out. I want to strike out 27 guys, but you, you do pitch a little bit different when you're up eight or when you're up one and the or down one or whatever the case may be. So um, the fact of the matter is I like guys like that that don't care about the stats. They care about the W. And Cubs got another one yesterday. Yeah, no doubt. All right, man. Well, that's a good show. Uh, again, Cubs and Padres tonight. Uh, make sure you check out the interview that we did. This is a little quickie with um, uh, with. Jameson Tyone, who I can tell you is a really nice dude, really mm -hmm. good guy, um, a fantastic person. It was fun talking to him uh, before and just, you know, kind of cutting up a little bit and then, you know, says he's feeling good. I think that's honestly something that the Cubs need is to get him back and, and we'll see what happens. I, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if there's not more moves made, but it's that we're getting to that point now. You know, guys are getting injured. You know, opportunities are coming up and we have a deep farm system. And I really do feel like there's better pitching than some of the guys in the big leagues in the, in the minors. And I think that the Cubs probably see that, too. So we'll keep an eye on all of that stuff uh, yeah, as we I move think, forward. I think a big reason why the Cubs missed the playoffs last year is they went way too far into the season with guys that weren't the best options. 
like you think of Hosmer and Mancini and Tucker mm-hmm. Barnhart and some of these guys. And it's like Morel is in the minor leagues and Alexander Canario and Nelson Velasquez and all these guys that could have impacted winning baseball at the major league level. I don't think Jed and company are going to make that mistake in 2024. Yeah. Guys get in the comments section, make sure you like, and subscribe, share with your Cubs friends and, uh, Let's celebrate, man. Winning some games. Six out of seven. Not too shabby, right? Keep flying it. Four and yeah. one on the show. Yeah, four and one. He's he's on fire right now. All right, guys. <laughs> Talk to you tomorrow. Go Cubs. 